All right, kids, I'm going to do this a little lesson, um, this little video on acid and basic and hydrides. Sorry about the staples going on in the background, but uh, it'll be okay. Um, so here's like the general rule, metallic oxides. Where do you find metals? Um, metals are on the left side, on the left side of the periodic table, um, or they call them ionic oxides. They form bases in water. For example, calcium. Calcium, you're going to find in alkali earth metals, and this calcium oxide is what we call an anhydride. It means it's without the H, and without hydride hydrogen. And then you put it in water, so if you put an anhydride in water, it makes a base. It makes a base. Vice versa, if you have this non-metallic oxide, which is on the right side of the periodic table, non-metallic, all your non-metals on the right, they call them covalent oxides or form acids in water. So here's an example, SO2, sulfur oxide. And again, it's anhydride because the hydrogen typically goes out in front because these are typically uh, negative ions, negative polyatomic ions. So you throw SO2 in water and it can make sulfurous acid. This little diagram shows how acid rain can begin if you have a factory or some sort of um, burning substance and it emits SO2 into the atmosphere, water will mix with it and it can generate acid rain. Uh, here's some other examples. Carbon, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide, which is also found in the atmosphere, which is a non-metal, a non-metal uh, makes an acid, carbonic acid. And remember, it's a non-metal or what they call a non-metallic oxide in water makes acid. Over here, cesium oxide, Se2O, and it's a 2 because remember the charges match up. Over here, I'm going to show you how to balance these two. Um, the metal oxides in water, they make bases, and I'm going to show you how they go and where they, they, where they come from so that you can determine how to do your work. Um, so this number 6, this is the first one on your homework, number 6 on page 477. So all it wants you to do is, here I'll show you a picture of it. So look at number six, right up here. And it says, predict the acidic or basic nature of the following anhydrides. So this is the homework, 6A through E. I want you to work on this in class. Um, it says, lithium Li2O. Remember, oxygen has a negative two and lithium has a plus one. Therefore, it's balanced out with two of them. Just remember that for metallic oxides. So predict the acidic or basic nature. What is it going to do? What's it going to form? And we said metallic oxides in water generate bases. So it will become a lithium hydroxide. A lithium hydroxide. Over here, this is a non-metal carbon dioxide. Carbon being on the non-metal side, a non-metal uh, anhydride. So this would form an acid or acidic. Uh, number seven is the other one. Let's go back to the notes really quick. Going back to the notes. Um, it wants you to write out, um, it says writing formulas for anhydrides. So you can go um, this one direction here from sodium hydroxide. You're going to get rid of the water. It's going to get rid of the water and it's going to form the anhydride. The anhydride, in this case here, because it's a metal oxide, is balanced by uh, the charges. The negative two and a plus one, Na2O and the water. Then you would balance everything out starting with the hydrogens. Since there's two hydrogens here, only one here, put a two in front, and everything will balance out. I'll show you this one here on, on an example from my homework. Same with this one here. If you have a sulfuric acid and you want to go to an anhydride, you would start with the water and then you would put the SO3 on this side here. Whatever's left, in other words. So you start with water. You put one water over there. And H2O is always water. Then you put the remaining, S, O, and 3. You would make sure that, again, before you do the SO3, um, you would make sure the hydrogens are balanced. And this is from number 7. So let's show you that one really quick as well. And then I'll do a problem. So look at number 7. So it says here, barium hydroxide. It wants to know... Um, what the anhydride is for that. And so we're going to do this one here, and I'll even do B, which is a rather challenging. But I want you to try it again on your own after we're done. Because remember, 7A through D is part of your classwork for today as well. 
So let's try this first one, barium hydroxide, BaOH2. So I'm going to go to my little sketch pad. All right, so let's start with it here. So barium, BaOH2. All right, so then the first thing that we can do is that we're going to, of course, have water, H2O, and you always want to have that. And then in the case here, since it is a metal, you're going to form a metal. I like to put in the charge. Barium has a plus two charge. And then oxygen, the oxygen that's here, oxygen has a negative two charge. So let's rewrite it and put it together. So it looks like this, barium hydroxide. And then it gives us water. And then since it's plus two and minus two, it just becomes BaO. Then the last thing we need to do is make sure everything's balanced. There's two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two oxygens. There's one oxygen here and one oxygen here. And there's one barium, one barium. We're all set. That is your final answer. So you would say, here it is. Here is the uh, metal anhydride. All right. Let's try it for the acid anhydride. All right. So we start off with this acid. And I said this one is going to be kind of a difficult one, so I'll, I'll do it here in class. So this is 7B right here. Um, it says HIO4, HIO4. And what we're going to do first is we're going to put water, H2O. All right. And so I'm going to put a plus here. Now these are a little different because they're non-metal and hydride. And so this is kind of a cool little plan that I've come up with that really works. Um, balance the H's before you even go over here. So I have two H's here, only one here. So I'm going to balance them. I'm going to put a two here. So two H's and two H's. Cool. So now, how many I's do I have? I have I, two. How many oxygens do I have? Well, I have eight total here, but one goes to water. So that means seven are left over. So then you would double check two H's, two I's. There are eight oxygens total, but there's one in water and then seven over here. And lo and behold, that's going to be your non-metallic anhydride. So that's how it works out. Um, and it's kind of a sure way to get the things done. Um, so give them a try. I would like for you to do the rest of those. We're going to go over those. Uh, the next day and you'll take your quiz on Thursday. I do apologize for not being there today, but I hope this video um, comes in handy. Now I'll put the book back so you can take a quick little snippet, a snapshot. This is what your homework is. 6A through D and then 7A through um, E and I've already done a couple of them for you. So good luck. Uh, see you later.